Welcome back to Proxamer, everybody. And uh, today we're going to be talking about a um, a comparison between two fast attack slots in the Craft World Elder book, Warp Spiders and Swooping Hawks. Now, the reason why I decided to compare these units is because oftentimes they are competing for the same role. And sometimes it's a little difficult to decide which one you actually want to have in your list because oftentimes, unless you're using a different detachment uh, or an uh, additional detachment, um, you're only going to have three slots. So you have to decide very carefully what you want to field. And there's tons of Eldar fast attack options that are effective. So which one should you pick? And is one definitively better than the other in most situations? Um, so we're going to be taking a look at that today. Uh, and honestly, two of the coolest units, in my opinion, I love warp spiders, always have. They were kind of not the greatest the last edition and swooping hawks, of course, uh, have just always been one of my favorite units. I loved running them throughout the editions. So let's take a look at what Swooping Hawks have going for them this time around. So um, Swooping Hawks are extremely fast. Uh, they move 14 inches a turn um, on top of an advanced move uh, in Battle Focus. And I'll talk a little bit more about what they get as far as Battle Focus a little bit later. Uh, they're anti-infantry centric with a, you know, with a... Um, Real big focus on light infantry. So they're really good at dealing with hordes of enemies. Um, and very light targets that might be harder to hit. Um, and they're great at capturing objectives because they have the sky leap ability. And they're also very survivable due to that same ability. So um, I'm going to go into what that is in a second. But um, the other thing they can do, which is part of their Exarch powers, is they can actually prevent enemy units from performing actions. Now, this is a little risky because uh, it requires you to roll 3d6. Now, typical units um, that you're going to worry about using actions and things like that are going to be about leadership 8 or 9, uh, typically. Sometimes a little less, but usually 8 or 9. So you should, on 3d6, be able to surpass that and cancel the enemy's actions, prevent them from using Overwatch and stuff like that. Um, so they're actually very good at the objective game now. So what exactly do Warp Spiders have um, that is similar and different than Swooping Hawks, right? So Warp Spiders are also very fast. Um, and just like Swooping Hawks, they can use the Sudden um, Assault ability. Now, personally, I actually don't think in a lot of cases for Swooping Hawks, Sudden Assault is a mandatory thing to use. But for Warp Spiders, it definitely is because it allows them to get into range uh, turn one to shoot. Um, just like Swooping Hawks, they have an anti-infantry focus. Although Warp Spiders are a little bit better at taking out armor, um, although they will typically hit less against uh, smaller units, um, they can easily avoid charges with their Flicker Jump ability as well as their Warp Jump Generator Battle Focus, which gives them 2d6 instead of the single d6. The drawback to this, of course, is if you're unlucky enough to roll a double one, you have to uh, take a mortal wound. And one of their best Exarch powers, in my opinion, is the Spider's Lair. And the Spider's Lair basically turns the unit into a great area denial unit. So a unit of five Warp Spiders, if it's fully in terrain, which to be honest with you, you probably should be running them as units of five. That's where they're at their strongest, I believe. Um, they can hide in terrain for a turn if they're completely within, within terrain. Once per game, they can seed that area. And basically any unit that enters or moves within it um, takes D3 mortal wounds and damage. And counts that piece of terrain as, as difficult terrain, which basically uh, is a negation of two to their movement value. So not only are they going to be slower, they're going to be taking damage, they're not going to be able to assault you as well. And this is really good when paired up with an objective. Um, so if there's an objective that, you know, is nearby that, you know, a unit has to cross terrain to get to, um, this is a great way to prevent that unit from coming in and actually um, being able to do what it wants to do. So... You can only use this ability once per game, but it's great to, you know, kind of put um, a stopper in a lot of units um, that are trying to get to objectives to score points later on in the game. So great ability. Uh, my opinion, the best ability they have and uh, one of the best reasons to take a unit of Warp Spiders in your list. So over, overall, Warp Spiders, a uh, very strong unit. So speaking from an objective standpoint, um, they perform a very similar role. 
right? They both are anti-infantry. They both are very fast. They're great at avoiding uh, charges and damage in general because of their speed. Uh, warp spiders having the warp jump generator and the flicker jump and then swooping hawks having the uh, sky leap. So which unit is actually better at the job that you want it to do? Which unit should you take in competitive play um, in most cases? So the answer to this is complicated because a lot of armies are going to look at swooping hawks and say, you know what? I can't deal with this. And they're not going to be able to deal with their sky leap ability. There's a lot of armies out there that are going to have a lot of issues with that. But on the other hand, there's a lot of armies that would have a lot of issues with warp spiders, especially assault style armies. So in general, warp spiders tend to be better against more combat oriented enemies while swooping hawks tend to be better at avoiding more shooting style armies uh, because they can they can hide behind obscuring terrain uh, with their sky leap ability. Um, and this will also mean that um, they will be better at handling objectives that do not have enemies within them. So uh, basically objectives that are not secured yet. So they can capture those with the sky leap ability um, and also stay safe from enemy shooting if they're far enough away. So when I compare these two units, I see two units who essentially are going to be doing the same thing. Um, but the math is slightly different depending on what their target is. Um, swooping Hawks are better against certain enemies. Warp Spiders are against, better against certain enemies. Uh, but in general, I think Swooping Hawks are a little bit more versatile in the types of enemies and armies that they are effective against. Warp Spiders are very good uh, because heavy infantry is a big problem. Um, in a lot of armies, um, so, you know, Eldar don't typically have problems dealing with heavy armor, especially in this edition, but, um, warp spiders do tend to be a little bit better at dealing with armor than swooping hawks. And if you're relying on swooping hawks, swooping hawks are not good against armor. So, um, even though warp spiders are better at doing that, swooping hawks tend to be a little bit more versatile when looking at, um, the different types of armies that they can go against and be successful. Um, for example, right now, Harlequins are just ultimately dominating the meta. Swooping Hawks are good against Harlequin armies. They're a great counter to a lot of the units they have. On the other hand, <coughs> Swooping Hawks are also good against Dark Eldar, which is another army that some Eldar lists would have trouble fighting against. Warp Spiders are not good against Harlequins, and they're not really good against Dark Eldar. Um, so, in a way... Swooping Hawks are actually much more effective at dealing with the meta than Warp Spiders are. Now, that's not to say Warp Spiders can't be used. I've seen a couple competitive lists run in, in recent tournaments in which Warp Spider-based lists work. You know, people have a couple of squads of Warp Spiders and they're very effective. Um, and that's great. Uh, those those players, kudos to them. My hat's off to them. They, they made those units work. Um, but I do still think Swooping Hawks are a little bit more versatile in what they can do um, overall. And this really has to do with one thing, and that's the Sky Leap ability. Sky Leap allows you to go all over the board instead of making a battle focus move. And especially, I mean, we're not talking about Baroth, but Baroth is a very effective unit at using this ability. Um, he has his own special version of Sky Leap. And I think in general, the limited range of Warp Spiders, the fact that they have range 12, it really is a damper to them and it lets them down, especially against armies that can catch them and are fast. For example, um, an army that is quick, um, regardless of the fact that they can use 2d6 battle focus and they have flicker jump, a fast army can still catch them um, and pretty much kill them with you know the use of stratagems and stuff like that. Harlequins can catch these guys because they can advance after shooting. Or excuse me, um, well, they can assault after their advance and because most of their units have pistols, they can also shoot. So in a way, Warp Spiders are supposed to be able to deny assaults and stuff like that in their special rules. But some of the more meta armies are not going to really worry about that too much because they're so quick. They can move so fast that if you're within 12 and let's say you roll 2d6 and on average that's a 7, a 7, excuse me, and then you can go back another 6 inches, well, that's going to be about 25 inch inches of distance between you. 
But the problem is, is that this is still not enough to deny fast armies from catching them out of position, either with shooting or, I mean, in some rare cases, close combat as well. Um, for example, Harlequins have a lot of abilities that will, would be able to allow them to close that distance. They have several units. I mean, to be honest with you, even Void Reavers, if their Void Reavers are moving 16 inches plus an additional six, they can easily get into range of those Warp Spiders and shoot them down and get ang good angles on them. So even if they do hide uh, behind obscuring terrain, uh, Harlequins are just too fast for that. So... Um, you know, Swooping Hawks might have a similar problem, but because they can move farther and across the battlefield, I mean, they can move anywhere on the battlefield. They, they can real reliably deploy in places that are generally safer for them. So, um, that really lets Warp Spiders down in a lot of competitive scenarios. So I guess in conclusion, it really depends on the matchup in general. Um, but in my opinion, Swooping Hawks are generally more useful in most matchups, um, than Warp Spiders are. Now, I might be a little wrong on this. I know that Warp Spiders have made an appearance in a couple of tournaments, and I think they're a strong unit, but I think that Swooping Hawks might be a better counter to a lot of the meta armies that are running rampant now. And they're both good units. They both have their strengths. But unless something changes, um, I really think, in, for the most part, Swooping Hawks are going to be better against most armies. Um, and this is just simply be, be because um, Warp Spiders, again, their short range puts them in a spot where they could be very easily killed by shooting. Uh, putting 25-inch distance between you and your opponent is, is good. It prevents a lot of assaults, but it's not necessarily going to prevent a lot of shooting. Um, so you have to keep that in mind as well. But I have to say, um, using a squad of Warp Spiders with the Spider's Lair ability and having that in your back pocket and using that unit as a strategic denial unit is very strong. And I think even Warp Spiders in not so great matchups can use that ability to great effect. Uh, for example, against Harlequins, if you're able to, um, you know, force Harlequins into a position where they have to move over terrain, it doesn't matter if they can move through it and ignore most of the penalties. What they can't ignore is the mortal wound damage and to be honest with you, because Harlequins have invul saves, mortal wounds are very effective against them. So your unit of five warp spiders can essentially destroy a lot of Harlequins that way. And on top of that, um, if they try to assault you, you have flicker jump and you could just kind of move away. So you don't really need to worry that much about that. And their assault move, if they do get into an assault, is going to absolutely, um, you know, do more damage and you still have the option of overwatching. So, you know, unless they have some Eldar trickery, uh, which might happen that prevents your overwatch, you're going to be doing a lot of damage and you're going to be making that unit of uh, that troop unit really pay for trying to um, assault your warp spiders. Now, most experienced players are just going to shoot your warp spiders to death and not really worry too much about it, but it could come in handy in some cases where they need to get to an objective that you're holding and the only way through it is through terrain and through your unit of warp spiders. And, you know, it's, it's quite possible that they're going to do that. So just keep that in mind that Warp Spiders, you know, they may not be, um, you know, in most cases better than Swooping Hawks at dealing with things like Harlequins and Dark Eldar, but they do have a use and they can be used um, in small numbers with the Spider's Lair ability to great effect. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. I know that was a kind of a quick video. I just wanted to go through briefly my points about, um, you know, Swooping Hawks versus Warp Spiders and kind of, you know, analyzing those units a little bit and seeing which ones um, are generally better in certain situations. Um, I'm going to have some more detailed unit spotlights coming up. Um, so stay tuned for that. But thank you for watching again. Hope you guys learned something. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.